apparently most people are consuming about one of these credit cards a week. One credit card a week is getting inside of our body because of microplastics. Uh, so that's what today's topic is going to be about and how maybe five signs that you have microplastics in you and what you should do to get rid of them, how to prevent them. And uh, they found out that these days microplastics are found in the human body all over the place, in the, in the lungs, in the brain, uh, the blood, and even in men's semen. So that's not good. And uh, the right, you know, plastics are obviously all over the place. They're, they're contaminating. They're all over the oceans, but now they're in our bodies. So that's the other problem. And uh, you may not even realize it until the symptoms show up and quote unquote, it could be too late. So today I'm going to talk about five uh, just signs that you might have microplastics or excess it um, in your body and uh, how to prevent it and more importantly, how to get rid of it. So apparently we produce uh, well over 430 million tons of plastic every year. And like I said, the scary part is apparently the humans consume about one credit card's worth of plastic spread out through your body every week. Now, it's found in rainwater because of all the toxins and pollutants. It's found in your food, in your toothpaste, in cosmetics, um, even bottled water. Um, it's unfortunately detected in placentas, and uh, breast milk, arteries, and yes, your brain, which again can cause dementia, Alzheimer's, and all these other problems. Um, one study even found that, again, microplastics were found in testicles of both humans and dogs, potentially affecting your fertility. So let's talk about five potential signs that you might have uh, microplastics build up in your body and how you shouldn't avoid it. The first one is just unexplained inflammation. Inflammation is a huge problem, as I've talked about in previous videos. It's linked to so many health problems. Um, from your uh, joint problems, obviously, and also inflammation in the brain, your muscles, it all negatively affects all your hormones. And unfortunately, as we get older, inflammation gets worse, and that's a really big topic. Now, the microplastics are making things even worse, and they trigger an immune response and then release inflammatory cytokines, the microplastics do. So this can, again, build up in your joints, uh, causing fatigue and chronic uh, swelling, again, in your brain. Now, inflammation is linked, like I said, so many health problems, and now we need to deal with extra microplastics on top of it. So that's one big issue. Another problem is brain fog and poor memory. Um, plastics have been shown to cross your blood brain barrier, which means that, you know, your body has a blood brain barrier. It, it takes, it prevents a lot of junk coming into it because that's how valuable your brain, the real estate is. But unfortunately, microplastics and certain drugs can get through, which is obviously not what we want. Um, they will uh, interfere with the neurotransmitters in your brain, such as, you know, dopamine and, and, uh, serotonin, all these other chemicals as well and decline over time. Uh, so if your memory isn't good, it may not be just because of aging or your diet. It could just be because of the microplastics. Also remember if your neurotransmitters aren't working well, serotonin and dopamine aren't working well, it's going to affect your mood and your energy levels and your sexual drive and just your overall happiness. Now, another problem with microplastics is hormonal imbalance because they're called endocrine disruptors such as BPA and phthalates, which also mimic and actually block natural hormones. So this means lower testosterone levels, higher estrogen levels, lower thyroid, and just higher stress hormones like cortisol. Now, another problem with uh, microplastics is digestive issues. Basically, the microplastics irritate your gut lining and they disrupt, they disrupt the microbalance, the microbiome balance, which can contribute to IBS, bloating, leaky gut, you know, bloat in your stomach where some people may think, hey, I'm gaining fat, but it's really just internal bloat. So gas, all these stomach problems. And remember, if your gut isn't happy, isn't working, nothing in the body is going to be optimal. And finally, another problem with microplastics is a weakened immunity and just very, you know, frequent illnesses. When your immune system is constantly fighting foreign objects, you know, such uh, as particles and, and pesticides and plastic debris, which again, weakens your defense system, well, it will lower your immune system. And this means more frequent colds, your immune system is going to be no illnesses, and it can potentially increase your risk for cancer and your body because you're not able to fight the cancer. We all have cancer, right? But when your immune system is optimal, it can fight it. But microplastics can lower the immune system and therefore increase, you know, heart problems, digestive problems, but also um, cancer. So if you're experiencing health problems, you know, and you can't figure out why it might just not be your diet, 
or stress. It might just be the microplastics in your body. All right, so what causes microplastics buildup? Um, it's not just from eating uh, the foods you eat or even drinking bottled water because microplastics are everywhere. The air, like I said, uh, you're breathing thousands of particles daily, especially indoors. Food, uh, things like salt, uh, rice, fruits, vegetables have all been tested positive in many studies for microplastics. And just household items like, say, a Teflon uh, pan, you know, frying pan, uh, synthetic clothing, food packaging, and beauty products. So even chewing gum or the wrapper and the wrapper on uh, teas are often coated with plastic, which will leach into the tea, which will go into your body. All right. Now, how do we prevent microplastic exposure? How do we cut down your daily exposure? First of all, you want to switch to glass or stainless steel instead of plastic containers, including water bottles. Avoid microwaving food and plastics. You already know about it because that heat releases more toxins from the plastic. Use glass or maybe even a paper uh, plate. Make sure the paper plate isn't co coated with plastic. Uh, using natural fibers instead, such as the cotton, wool, synthetic clothes, uh, tends to shed plastic in the wash and into your skin. Next you want to do is use filtered water at home. Uh, they will typically filter microplastics. The best one are the reverse osmosis or microfiltration. Definitely try to avoid uh, tap water. And finally, you want to dust often. You know, microplastics get all over the place. So you want to, in, you know, uh, dust the indoors more because you're going to be inhaling them constantly. Um, you might want to also invest in getting a HEPA filter, at least maybe in the main parts of your house, which is your bedroom, because you're in there like at least eight hours. Maybe your office, your living room to get rid of that toxin stuff. And try vacuuming more often. You know, every time I vacuum, more junk I find out. So I should do it more often myself. All right. So what if you have microplastics in your body, you know? Can you get rid of them? Is it too late? Or maybe you just want to say, hey, I might have them. Let me just get rid of them anyhow. So you want to eat fiber rich foods um, that help, you know, trap uh, and eliminate toxins from your gut. Uh, fruits and vegetables are great. Even fiber supplements are awesome. You know, for example, I take one or two teaspoons, actually two big teaspoons of Metamucil every night has a lot of, uh, you know, fiber and fiber in general just has a lot of health benefits. Most people, most of us are not getting enough fiber as it is. Um, Exercise and sweating is really important because it mobilizes and excretes stored plastic through your sweat. Um, activated charcoal is basically can combine to plastic related compounds in your gut and gets rid of it. Um, taking glutathione uh, boosters such as N acetylcysteine and ALA, alpha lipoic acid, they also support both uh, liver detox and kidney detox. I've been taking NAC and ALA for years now. Um, fasting. And intermittent fasting can also be good because it enhances autophagy and cleans up junk. And also one of the best ones in is this exercise, all right? Exercise, I think, is better than fasting at improving autophagy. Um, it improves your overall cellular function. It gets rid of things. You know, you sweat, your muscles function, function and all your immune system and hormones improve. So unfortunately, you know, in summary, we don't live in a world where we can control everything. We can't, can, you know, and peed all that microplastics going around, but you can help eliminate a lot of it or at least reduce it. More importantly, all of this is to help reduce inflammation in the body, which I've talked about many times. That's the real problem. Um, just, just for you, just to let you know, I created, I created a, a um, microplastics detox blueprint and how to reduce inflammation. It's a free guide. It's yours for free. Take a look underneath in the description area, utilize it, share it with other people, just simple ways you can reduce uh, microplastics, alternatives, and more importantly, how to reduce inflammation. Try it. Let me know how it works for you.